I wonder what it's like outside today. Hmm. It's Jerusalem. I'm expecting a nice sunny day. What? 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 So if you hear a lot of whooping and yelling going on outside, that's everybody else enjoying the snow day. Me, being from Canada, decided that it was a good day to be inside when it's snowing outside. Because I went to Jerusalem to escape the snow and the cold in the Canadian winter, so I have no interest in that outside white stuff. I want to talk to you about a typical day in the life of Ilana Schilling in Jerusalem. A typical day in my life right now goes a little something like this. I wake up in the morning, walk to school, argue with my chevruta, study in class, eat lunch, learn in class again, walk home, talk to my mother, see my boyfriend, and then finally go to bed. And for me, what that means is that throughout my day, I have to break up myself into different pieces of me, into the chevruta, the daughter, the student, the girlfriend. Now most of the time this is fairly easy to do, because life defines for yourself when you're supposed to present the different roles that you're supposed to play. For instance, I know that when I'm sitting in class, I'm a student, and when I'm walking home calling my mother, I'm a daughter. But what happens when these roles cross? What happens when you have a conflict about which role you're supposed to be at a given moment? For instance, let's say I'm in the Beit Midrash, studying with my chavruta, and my mother calls. Should I pick up the phone? What is more important for me to be at that exact moment? Should I be a good chavruta and not break from my learning? Or should I be a good daughter and answer my phone and see what my mother wants? And of course, perhaps unsurprisingly, the answer could be found in today's Mishnah. Now it's been a while, sorry, my fault, so a little bit of background information. We're in Brachot, chapter 5, talking about the Shmone Esrei prayer. Ha'over lifnei ha'teva, lo ya'aneh achar ha'kohanim, amen, mipnei ha'teruf. The Mishnah is referring to the Birkat Koanim, a special prayer that's found in the Shmone Esrei. Now, the Birkat Koanim prayer is pretty cool because it requires a Kohen, a priest. Background information. Way back in biblical times, B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel, later known as the Jews, could be divided into 12 tribes. Of those tribes, one was called the Levites. Famous Levites include people like Moshe and Aharon. And Aharon was a very special member of the Levi tribe because he became the first priest, the first Kohen. And all of his descendants after him became part of this family, this kind of sub-tribe called Kohanim. And this tradition continues until today. Okay, fine, so you have all these descendants of Aharon scattered around the Jewish community. What does it really mean? Well, in truth, it means very little because the Kohanim really only had significance during the time of the Beit HaMikdash, during the temple. And now the Kohanim are kind of out of a job and don't really have anything to do. Actually, that's not entirely true. They are involved in certain uh, rituals and stuff, but we're not going to get into it. And they're also involved in Birkat Kohanim. So what happens, asks the Mishnah, if the Shaliach Tzibur, the leader of the prayers, is actually a Kohen himself? Does he bless the community with the other Kohanim? Or does he stay as the Shaliach Tzibur and kind of pretend that he's not a Kohen for the time being? Says the Mishnah, the Shaliach Tzibur might get confused if he starts participating in Birkat Kohanim. And here the Mishnah is addressing that sort of problem of roles crossing paths that I mentioned earlier. The same way that I had a problem not knowing whether I should be a daughter or a chevruta in that instance when my mother calls, the Shaliach Tzibur doesn't know if he should be the leader or the Kohen. And the Mishnah recognizes this problem and stipulates for the Kohen what he should be. The Mishnah continues. Ve'im ein sham kohen elahu lo yisat kapav. Ve'im hav tachat ho shehu noset kapav v'chozer litfalato. Rashai. Okay, says the Mishnah. But what happens if the shaliach tzibor, the leader of the prayers, is the only kohen in the room? Says the Mishnah. Only if the kohen can promise that he won't get confused, can he in fact participate in birkat kohanim. Now what I think is really cool about this is that we get this sort of inside view about what the Mishnah thinks is the most important role. And so I think what the Mishnah is doing here is sort of cautioning us. There is a right answer the Mishnah is saying about whether or not I should pick up my phone during my chavruta time. But I'm kind of going to have to make a judgment call and figure it out for myself. I should say to myself, if I pick up the phone, what's going to happen? 
Is my learning with my Cleverita going to be compromised? Just as a side note, I find this whole issue of roles very, very interesting because I have a new role that I just came into about a week ago. My sister had a baby and I am now a first time aunt! Yes, I have a sister. I know she hasn't appeared on any videos, but I have a sister and a brother-in-law and a niece. Her name is Sophie Miriam and I've Skyped with her and she's really cute and I'm really excited to go back to Canada and visit her. Chag Yom Shalik Sameach! Happy snow day, everybody! <laughs>